I would like to talk to you today um, about a previous video I put out and and um, I made the decision to take the video down um, because I caused confusion um, with what I was trying to say and even though um, you know I, I felt that I was you know taking my time and speaking slowly um, it was pointed out to me that the words I spoke and the message I spoke could be taken could be taken out of context not by you know someone wanting to twist my words but that you know sometimes when we you know we speak from the heart and, and we speak the things that are in our heart um, they don't always come out the, you know, the way we intended, and sometimes we need to bring clarity, uh, you know, to 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 what we're trying to say. And you know, I'm not, uh, here's the thing: everything must be done in love. And I've watched that video over and over and over and over again, and I know what I was trying to say. And I know what I was speaking out against, and I know my intention was good. Um, I can see where it would have looked like I was passing judgment. Um, I don't want anyone to get the wrong idea about what I was trying to say. And and a beloved brother in the Lord corrected me, and. I didn't hear what he was trying to say because I was too busy defending what I was trying to say and um, over the past three days almost four days now um, you you know you can ask my wife I've been agonizing over this pouring over the New Testament searching myself um, <laughs> running the gamut with emotion and you know it was the right thing to do. It was the right thing to do to take that video down. <clears throat> and I'm going to try to restate my position and correct the error that was in the previous video. So uh, I want to first thank everyone that has viewed the video. And I, you know, I encourage you to please watch this video um, listen to what I'm trying to say um, listen to what the Word of God is saying and you know I, I ask I ask you know for your forgiveness um, if, if I have upset anyone that was never my intention um, my only intention is ever to glorify God to glorify his precious son to speak of the glory and the power and the saving grace and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ and our zeal and passion for our Lord can sometimes blind us to remembering that above all all things must be done in love and it's when it's like when we try to evangelize someone who's caught up in a movement that is not biblical our love and passion for the truth makes us hate the falsehoods of false religion but it doesn't mean that we should ever hate the people who have been blinded and caught up in false religion and our war is not with our fellow man but with those who try to lead them astray with that said I'm, I'm going to not beat around the bush and I'm going to say what has been bothering me there is and I'm going to use terminologies that are out there I didn't create these terminologies there's a movement called you know 
and they don't call themselves this, okay? But but it's hyper grace, and it, you know when you first hear that term, you know it's the same thing I think of like hyper grace. How can we, you know, too much grace? Like how can you have too much grace? Like you know we live by grace every breath that we breathe, every second of our lives. The grace of God and forgiveness of sin is upon us at all times. Um, if the grace of God were not in the life of a, of a believer every breath that we breathed every second of the day we would surely be lost i mean it's by the grace of god that we are saved and it is by you know the grace of god that we are kept and it is by the grace of god that that we shall you know see god it, it's you know so when i say hyper grace i don't mean to say too much grace because the grace message is throughout the entirety uh, of the Bible I mean and we are saved by grace through faith in Christ alone okay not of works now people have taken that and they have said we are saved by grace through faith not of works lest any man should boast it is the gift of God and this is so true but then they say that if you are trying to live holy and you're trying to listen to the spirit of God within you and you know if 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 a brother or sister in the Lord tells you that you should or should not do certain things that you're under the law it's sin management you're denigrating the grace of God and you're not trusting in the finished work of Christ and that is incorrect that is incorrect because the same Paul who said that ye are saved by grace through faith it is the gift of God and not of works as any man should boast he is talking about how do, how are we born again how do we receive the grace of God is it because we did good works that God rewarded us was it because we were more righteous than other people is it because there was something good found in ourselves no it was the mercy and grace of God and I can back this up with scripture because he writes to Titus and he says this he said for the grace of God that bring us salvation let me see hold on I don't want to I want to make sure I want to make sure that I am reading please forgive me I, I didn't mean to have this big uh, gap here um, right here we go okay all right all right Okay, um, I'm going to read a little bit more than I originally intended, just so we can get, just so we can feel, because this is written by Paul, and so Paul's the one that first told us we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. It is a gift of God. Amen. I say amen to that, and we should all say amen to that. So let's say it together. Amen. It's by the grace of God alone. It's in Christ alone. It's the mercy of God alone upon a fallen world and a fallen people praise God for the grace of God Paul writes to Titus Titus 2 and he brings in the scope what the grace of God bringeth to those who belong to God okay so Titus 2 11 for the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lusts, we should live soberly and righteously and godly in this present world, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a particular people, zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, and to be ready for every good work. Speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish and disobedient, deceived, serving diverse lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But after that, the kindness and love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done but according to his mercy he saved us 
by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God might be careful to maintain good works, that these things are good and profitable unto men. But avoid foolish questions and genealogies and contentions and striving about the law, for they are unprofitable and vain. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition reject, knowing that he that is such is subverted and sins being condemned of himself. So the same Paul who is quoted in Romans saying, we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast, it is the gift of God, is it's saying to Titus that not by works of righteousness which we have done, let's go back, but after that the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared toward man, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, by the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Ghost, which he shed abundantly upon us through Jesus Christ our Lord, that being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. He's saying we are saved by grace through faith. That's a gift of God when we're brought to repentance, when we're brought to the knowledge of God, when we're brought to the knowledge of our sin, when we're brought to the knowledge of the Savior, when, we're, when, we're, when the Holy Spirit indwells the believer, when we're regenerated by the washing of the Holy Spirit, when we're baptized in the Christ, when we're born anew, that this is the gift from God. Okay? When, you know... But he's not saying that living for God, since we've been forgiven and saved, is legalism. And and he never says that our works, you know, that that with you know, my point is is is, and I'm trying to so I'm sorry because I'm trying to be so careful with what I say in this video. I want this done in love. Brethren, we must understand that if you pour earnestly over the New Testament, if we live for God who has saved us, you know, that Christ has cleansed us of our sin and, and we have been ordained to go forth and bear fruit and that we should be a particular people unto him, we are, you know, we are told by the apostles over and over, Peter, James, John, Paul, we're told how to live in this present age. And the hyper-grace movement is saying, Jesus died for all your sins, past, present, and future. So, quite frankly, you know, I mean, the implication is, I mean, and I'm, I have to address these issues, people, so please, in love, understand where I'm coming from, but that's where heresy creeps into the church, because we're not even allowed to address sin anymore. We're not even allowed to confess our sin or they say that we're, you know, that, that we're diminishing the grace of God and we're denying the finished work of Christ, on the, of Christ on the cross. That if we go before the Father in love, in relationship and say, Father, I have done this horrible thing today. Please forgive me in Christ, you know. And, and, and you know, the Bible says he's faithful to cleanse us of our unrighteousness. When, when we try to take that away from the believer... And we say, you can't even address sin anymore. There's, there's a problem. Because Jesus addresses sin in Revelation when he addresses the churches. He addresses five of the seven churches. And, and, and there's strict warning for the things they're doing and not doing. If Christ doesn't see their sin and if sin is unimportant in the life of a, of a believer, then, then why is Christ addressing sin? Why are the apostles addressing sin? Why is sin such a huge issue to a born-again believer if God doesn't see it, if God doesn't recognize it, and it's all under the blood. Look it. Jesus died to forgive us our sins, and when we were born again, everything we did to that point was cleansed and removed, not to be spoken of. And now we walk with the Lord, and as we fall, we confess, and he forgives and continuously cleanses us in the blood of Christ. To say that we shouldn't address sin, quite frankly, 
is preposterous. You know, I mean, in, in, even relationally wise, if, 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 you know, if we're to be in fellowship and walk in the light and be earnest, he already knows of, of our needs and our desires and our sin. We commune with him. We have fellowship. We say, Father, I, I did a thing I should not do. And he's faithful because of the blood of Jesus to cleanse us. We are not denying the power of, of, of what Christ did on the cross. We're embracing it and continuously being washed in that cleansing. You know, when we can't address sin anymore in the church, you know, we're saying everything the apostles said was wrong. You know, I mean, you, you know, hyper grace teaching would have us just tear out like three quarters of the New Testament and say it's unimportant. They say the words of Christ, well, that was for the Jews and that was before the cross. You know, they, they, they take the entire whole Old Testament and say, well, that's not for us these days. And they're doing things that are unbiblical and they're denying the clear word of God that tells us how we should live in this present age saying that Sodom and Gomorrah was used as an example for us to understand how grievous it is to God and we have people that are saying that there's you know openly gay and lesbian churches and that because everyone sins and no sin is greater or lesser than another and since they've all been paid for that you can be openly gay and born again and the problem is, is the Bible speaks emphatically against that notion that the Spirit of God would reside in you and live in you. And God is never changing. He's the same as he was yesterday, today, and forevermore. Amen. He is blessed forever. And that the Spirit of God could reside in you and that you could engage yourself in rebellious activity, completely unrepentant, completely engaged in sin, and call yourself born again is preposterous. Now, I'm not trying to, I'm trying to bring clarity and truth. We're told to examine ourselves to make sure that we're in the faith. You know, yes, as we walk with the Lord, we all have a different walk. The Holy Spirit is correcting us. The Father is changing us. You know, we're living for Christ. There's this new nature. And that, you know, as we walk with him, you know, and, you know, as my brother pointed out, you know, he said, you're discouraging the brethren because, you know, it sounded like you were saying you could look at them and decide whether they were born again or not. My intention was not to ever come across that way, and that's why I took that video down. My intention was to say for that person, for themselves, there will be a newness. I was a drug addict when I came to Christ and he saved me, when God saved me, you know, I knew that there was a Jesus Christ. I knew I had been forgiven. Um, um, I just wanted to know more about him. I knew nothing of the Bible. I, I remember being a babe in Christ, you know, reading the book of Matthew for the first time, going, oh my goodness, did you know they tried to kill the baby Jesus? You know, I knew nothing of theology. I knew nothing of the scriptures. I just knew there was a God. I knew there was a Jesus Christ, and I knew he loved me, and I knew I was forgiven. But it, 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 I continued to do drugs for a while. Now, there was a condemnation within me. I knew, well, th I, I seem... You know, th this this is hypocritical. I'm claiming Christ and I'm sneaking away and I'm I'm still like something was different. Instead of loving my drug use, I, I was conflicted immediately. But it, there was time until God took it from me where, where it was no longer, I was no longer a slave to it. So there will be power in the life of a believer. God is not going to leave you in your sin and and, and leave you in the state you're in. This is a blessed promise from the Father. He's not saying, you know, that Christ went to the cross and gave his life as a ransom for many, and he's going to leave you rebellious and, and you know, the enemy of God. He's saying, you're my child through the spirit of adoption, through Christ. And now that you're in my family, I'm going to work with you. I'm going to change you. I'm going to conform you to the image of my son, for this is my will. You know, and things that are unpleasing are going to be removed. And things that are pleasing are going to come in. I mean, you know, and so there's a new nature and a new heart and a new desire in the life of a born-again Christian. And it's not for us to look at someone and, and whatever stronghold or bondage they may be in and, and point the finger and to say to them you can't be born again because look at the life you're living my words were for the believer themselves for assurance because one of the greatest assurances I've had when the enemy comes knocking and gets you to doubt your salvation is the power that God has placed in your life 
you know, for 20 years, I went between alcohol and drugs, fire into the frying pan, and I never, you know, I, you know, God took this from me, okay? Um, you know, there, there, there are sins that it, it's inappropriate to share. Our testimony isn't to be, you know, uh, exploited as, you know, I, I'm not, I don't want to get in detail what I'm trying to say is, is I have evidence in my life of things that I was under complete bondage of. And the Lord has taken that from me. Was that immediate? No, it wasn't immediate. And, and, and my brother in the Lord, he, he's pointing that out, that a young Christian, as a babe in Christ, is going to be on spiritual milk. Um, they're not going to understand uh, you know, the, the uh, entirety of Scripture. They're not going to possibly even forsake the things that God would have them forsake immediately. I look at my own conversion. He really made me look deep into myself. And I look at my own conversion. And there is a process. And, and that goes back to what I was saying in many other videos. That sanctification, yes, in the moment of salvation, we were set aside and sanctified and called holy. The blood of Christ covering us. And yet, it's undeniable in Scripture that there is a process as we walk with Christ. We've been forgiven of our sins. We're made anew in Christ. And now deny yourself and take up your cross and follow me. And we walk with Christ that as we fall and stumble and fall into the temptation, the Father's going to pick us up, correct us, and change us. And that is evidence for the believer, not for the outside world to point a finger but evidence for the believer that you can know that God has truly saved you, that there's a newness, like I am starting to hate the sin I once loved, and I'm starting to love things that I never knew I could love, that God loved me first, and this I love him, that through Christ he commends his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died, and there's this new nature that is undeniable in the scripture. And then there's, then there's you know, uh, uh, pleas from the apostles on how to live in the New Testament. That that works are not legalism. That living for God is not legalistic. Living for God and confessing sin as we walk with Him in fellowship in the light is not uh, decreasing our faith in Christ alone. That 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 is a straw man argument because if the church has come to the point where we can no longer address sin. When we can no longer say to a brother in Christ who has fallen into sin and remind him, as my brother pointed out, who you are in Christ and that this is not becoming of a child of God and to, and to encourage each other to, to stay on the narrow path and to live righteously for Christ who died for us, that this is biblical. You know, so my point is, is there is a movement that is telling you, and they're mega churches. They're, you know, what kind of church you go to, and there's like tens of thousands of people, and someone strutting across back and forth on stage, you know, and preaching the grace of God and preaching the grace of God. Yes, this is the grace of God, but they put in there this legalism where you can't address sin, you can't, you know acknowledge that we should be different you can't acknowledge that Christ didn't die on the cross so we could be as wicked as Sodom and Gomorrah that that you know they deny sanctification and the they're denying the true power of the gospel because the gospel is not only to to forgive us our sins but to free us from our sins so we're no longer bondage to sin but we have a new master because we're slaves now not to sin but to righteousness and so that is for the believer this is all for the believer it's not for anyone to judge and say well because who can't have a bad day right i mean it's for no one to judge and say well look at what you've said or look at what you've done or look at what you're involved in we're like my brother said we are to encourage and love you know, and bring to remembrance who we are, that we're the children of God, and this is not becoming. And God himself, the Father, is the one who purges us and prunes us that we bear fruit as we remain in Christ. But I see these people in the hyper-grace movement twisting scriptures, and they put it, they deny that there should be... Um, they deny that there should be a newness. I mean, and, and I was going to use the word evidence, but I don't want it taken like evidence for the outside world to judge our walk with the Lord. I'm saying there should be evidence for the believer. I mean, this, this, 
this is great assurance that, that we see, you know what, I have a heart and a love. If you've watched my video where, where you know, it's called an, you know, My Amazing Experience with God, um, I told that man, uh, you know, two years ago, I wouldn't have stopped to help you. And as a matter of fact, I would have probably said some hurtful, horrible things toward you. You know, I have a love for those who are the least of these. I have a love for those for the homeless, for the drug addicts, for the drug users, for the runaways, for the battered wives, for you know, uh, for all the outcasts of society. That's where my love resides, and that's who uh, my love is drawn towards. You know, and so I don't want it. I'm not judging someone else's walk or what predicament they may be in. This is not about acting righteous and holy before a world to put on a show. This is for the believer to understand that 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 God is going to change you. God is going to move you. You will know this. You will feel this. No one had to teach this to me. You know, God is working in my life that there is power. And there's people that are preaching against the power. They're preaching against us, even addressing sin when Peter and James and John and Paul and, you know, Jude. And we see sin addressed and we see them saying that men have crept in unawares and the church taking the grace of God and turning it into lavishness you know and you know it, it does not deny the power of, of the cross and what Christ has done that now that we're cleansed and we walk with him that that we are uh, that, that we are aware of sin where we were once ignorant of our sin and we just lived how we wanted to now we understand oh my goodness this is wrong and oh Lord but it's personal it's between you and God it's what God is doing in you and and the newness and the new nature and the new desires is all evidence that God is doing a good work in you and the Bible promises that that God will continue and complete this good work in you he has began until the day of the Lord Jesus Christ these are to be assurances of our conversion we are to examine ourselves to make sure that we are indeed in the faith because there are many people that just want to say look I had you know 2,000 people saved on a Friday night you know, you know, and, and maybe some people were saved, but I'm saying, understanding that God is the one who saves, you know, there's no magic formula. If there was something, something salvific in the water, I could just take an unbeliever and dunk them in water in the name of Jesus, and they'd come out a born-again Christian, but we know that's not true. What leads us to the water's edge is the fact that we've been born again in the first place, and we want to do what Christ commanded us to do, and it's no different then getting someone to recite you know what they call the sinner's prayer you know and 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 you know say these words okay i'll say these words there now you're born again i mean there's nothing salvific in those words the crying out and the calling out to god is is done by by the holy spirit coming over a person and convicting them of their sin and the holy spirit doesn't condemn us of our sin but even as believers were convicted of sin the fact I took down this video, the fact I've agonized for three days, the fact I'm trying to say this in a loving manner, in the way that 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 I want God to have me say this, is evidence, because, you know, I'm not proud and walking around saying, well, this and that and the other. I mean, my flesh wanted to fight this for a while, but the point is, is all I'm trying to do is speak out against a movement that is denying most of the New Testament that is twisting the words of Christ and Paul and Peter and James to say something that they never said and denying the fruit and denying the new birth and denying the new nature denying sin in the believer's life is still a problem and that we should not be involved in it and that we should be you know the fact that Jesus Christ died to forgive us our sins if we truly know him and he lives in us yes. that there that there should be this desire to live for him you know and you know so my point is is I see a lot of things that are not biblical. Jude saw things that were not biblical. James saw things that were not biblical. Peter saw things that were not biblical. If the apostles were here today, <coughs> what would they say about the, the, the easy believism that all your sins are forgiven, so off you go? And you can't address sin. As a matter of fact, if you confess sin to God as you walk with Christ, you're decreasing the blood of Jesus, and you're not trusting in the finished work of the cross. We can't even address sin in the church anymore. You know? And and if you read the book of Jude, 
you know, uh, Jude is saying that, that, you know, he said, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men who have crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of God into lavishness and denying the only Lord, God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put in remembrance, though you knew this once, how that the Lord, saving people out of the land of Egypt, after word destroyed them, which believed not, and the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he is reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the day of judgment, even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in the like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh and despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, disputed about the body of Moses, dared not bring an accusation against him, but said, The Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves, and woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward, and perished in the gain, saying of Kor, These are spot in your feasts of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit with withers without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots raging waves of the sea foaming out their own shame wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever you know and enoch also the seventh from adam prophesied of these saying behold the lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all of their ungodliness among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts, their mouths speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. But, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you there should be mockers in the last time who walk after their own ungodly lusts. But these who separate themselves sensual, having not the Spirit, but beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost the Holy Ghost keep yourselves in the love of God looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life and of some have compassion making a difference and others save with fear pulling them out of the fire hating even the garment spotted by flesh now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, now and forever. Amen. You know, Jude is talking about people infiltrating the church and turning the grace of God into lavishness. You know, and, and as hard as it is to believe, when we can't address sin in the church, when we can't address how we should be walking with the Lord, when we can't tell a brother or sister that they should or shouldn't be living this way, not to... Not to judge them but to remind them that's not who they are in Christ this is not becoming of a child of God you know there is something desperately wrong and Christ in Revelation he addresses the churches you know in five of seven he has very harsh words and you know if sin in the life of a believer is not important then why pray tell is is sin mentioned so much in the New Testament by the Apostles you know so my, my problem is is people being led astray and being convinced that you know that they're born again when all of scripture would testify there's something wrong with their walk and I must state again because it was a bone of contention in my last video it's not for me to judge another person's walk with the Lord examine yourself compare yourself read the New Testament and see you know that yes by the grace of God by his mercy undeserving not our works we didn't earn it it was the grace of God alone through Christ but we have been ordained and prepared to go forth in good works and have fruit that would remain they, they're leaving out the sanctifying walk with the Lord after being born again they're leaving out that part and as we read the words of Paul to Titus Paul he, he, he restates what he said in Romans, but clarifies that 
the not of works does not mean that there's not fruit and works that come from being born again. He's saying it wasn't works that earned our salvation, that it was the grace of God. And he goes on to say that we were prepared for good works, that we should go forth and bear fruit. And these are the words of Jesus Christ. We are not denying Christ. And Jesus told us how to pray. Pray like this, after this manner. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Jesus tells a parable how if we do not forgive debts, our Heavenly Father will not forgive us. If we don't forgive others people's sin against us, He will not forgive us our sin. This is our walk with the Lord. You know, and they'll say, well, that was Old Testament, or that was, or, or that was before the cross, and that was to the Jews, and, and, and this is for you know, the Old Testament believer, and this is the law. And they, and they divide it all up, and, 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 and you know, the Scriptures was the Old Testament to Jesus Christ and the Apostles. You know, the New Testament wasn't, wasn't penned, but you know, in the first century. So, you know... The, you know, saying that all scripture is God breathed. You know, this is the Old Testament, and they're and and they want to divide the word up into little pieces where all you get is like a some quotes from Paul over here, and may, you know, because it fits their doctrine. But the whole of scripture, total scripture, you know, the entire counsel of God shows a believer how they can be assured of their salvation, how they should be living, not according to men's judgment, but according to their love of God. That if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Not prove your love by keeping commandments. If you love me, you will want to do what I have commanded. This is what Christ is saying, and and this is all part of the new nature. Examine ourselves. This is to be evidence in our lives that we truly know God, that we have truly experienced God. Um, and God bless you all. And my, my prayer is that all would come to the saving grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am, you know, am, you know and, 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 you know, my walk with the Lord started four years ago. And he had mercy on me. And, and every day he has mercy on me and patience and long suffering for his hard headed son. But he loves me through Christ. And he wants me to tell you that, yes, we're saved by grace through faith. Amen. And we praise God for this. For this cause Christ died. If there was any other way, then Christ died in vain. But there, over and over and over, beloved, how shall we live? Beloved, is there, there shall be a new nature. There shall be new desires. God will cause this. You can be assured of your salvation by the evidence that God is putting in you. And not even by your ability to perform this, but your just new desires. How many times a day do I say or do something and I'm like, Lord, I shouldn't have done that. Don't take away my communion with God as I'm honest with Him about my walk with Jesus. Don't tell me that I cannot confess my sin to my Father who is in heaven as I walk with His blessed Son. Don't take that from us. Don't tell us that our sin is unimportant when Christ addresses it in the, to the churches in Revelation. You know, don't, don't try to tell me that all the apostles wrote about sin and how to flee from sin and not to live in sin if it's unimportant. That's my point. That's my bone of contention because I know as a blood-bought, born-again Christian, it's nothing that was good in me that caused God to save me. I know there's nothing good in me apart from Christ right now that He should save me. I know that if I could lose my salvation, I surely would have lost it by now, if not the day I received it. But my love toward God, who has given of Himself to save a wretched sinner like me, has driven me and, 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 and the Holy Spirit guiding me to live for Him, to love Him, to be changed and to do what he would have me to do and this is his will and they want to take that from us they want to convince a person they're born again when they don't have the assurance that God is truly living in them and and I am angry at that movement I'm angry at the people who are steering people astray I'm angry at people that are deflecting from sin I'm angry at people that are corrupting the church and that is where my anger lies not with the believer not with someone struggling with a besetting sin with a movement that is it is telling a half truth and they're denying the whole of scripture i pray in the name of jesus in the name of jesus that i have cleared this matter up i pray that these words were not offensive i pray that you understand this is out of love it is in, it is all to his glory and all to his name that that we are born again but as children 
how are we to live in this present age is most definitely important or you don't believe the word of God and he promises to work with his children and, and to change us and to mold us and to prune us we cannot listen to people who are trying to decrease we are accused of legalism because we want to live for God and yet they are the ones denigrating the grace of God because not only are we saved from the penalty of sin but we're saved from the bondage of sin and we have a new master that the that the grace of God not only saves us from the penalty but saves us from the bondage that we can be free in Christ and live for him and and, and there is a movement that he's denying this and so God bless you all. Thank you for listening. Um, I, I apologize if the previous video caused confusion. Um, I've taken it down. I've put this in its place. And I hope and pray this has helped someone. And God bless you all.